Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of this book. I'm pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Peter Hepburn, author of Chapter 17, Survive or Thrive? Can Community College Libraries Surmount the Challenges They Face? Peter Hepburn is the head librarian at the College of the Canyons in Santa Clarita, California. He previously worked at the University of Illinois at Chicago. He is serving as the ALA treasurer. Throughout chapter 17, Peter Hepburn highlights the effect of declining enrollments of community colleges and the pressures it places on budgeting, as well as advocating for the library's value. The challenge he notes is that college leaders and policymakers tend to focus on what they see, fewer visits, quieter spaces, books on the shelves. An opportunity to address the, this challenge is offered through accreditation standards, which identify the library as a necessary entity for the college. This gives libraries a chance to continue reinventing their services and relevancy to the college. He also emphasizes the uncertainty of the future and how building effective partnerships and collaborations could be what helps the community college library thrive in the future, not just survive. So Peter Hepburn, welcome. I'm excited to talk to you today. Thank you, Sandy. It's so good to be here. It's good to talk with you again. So uh, let's get things started. I'd love to hear your brief vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Great. I'm cautiously optimistic about libraries in 2035. Change happens fast. I mean, when I think back to how different my own community college library operated and how it felt when I arrived there 11 years ago, I can't even begin to guess what new technologies or circumstances we're going to be facing in the next number of years. Community college libraries will continue to exist, but they'll also be marginalized unless they can tap into and contribute to providing a new and wider range of resources and services. Those that can adapt will be the models the rest of us will look to. Well, that's great. So you talk about adapting. What, what are you most concerned about as you look ahead into this future for libraries? There are a couple of things. One of them that's kind of external to libraries and the other one that's internal to us. Um, the external one is the demographic cliff in higher education that we're going to be hitting. That is the number of college age students is just going to start shrinking or quite, quite, quite dramatically. Um, at least in California, funding has been tied in part to ever increasing numbers of students. And that simply can't continue, at least not in all the community college districts across the state. What happens to college budgets and by extension library budgets when there are fewer students paying tuition? What happens to libraries when colleges start making hard choices based on these budgetary crises? We're not gonna disappear but we won't be getting much support either. So that's the external one that concerns me. The internal one is I worry about those of us in libraries who cling to what we've always done, who define ourselves in terms of circulation numbers or the buildings that we manage. Those do remain a part of what we are, what we offer in, in college libraries. But if we stick to those, if we're really just just firm with those only, if we're territorial about those things, we're not going to have as great a reach across campuses as we can and as we should. So, so the, the, that's great. We've outlined some of the things we need to be mindful of. What are you most excited about for the future of libraries? So I mentioned earlier, I can't envision entirely what what new technologies or, or circumstances there will be. But one thing that's now that's on everyone's mind is AI. I mean, I've never really been someone myself who's exploring technology the way that a number of others in our profession do. So I have to admit, I'm kind of daunted by AI, but I don't see it as our enemy in libraries. Instead, I want my colleagues and I in my library to figure it out how we can tap it more fully. I want to understand it better myself so that I know how to work with it effectively for our students and with our classroom faculty. Um, I, I might be naive thinking that there's so many terrific applications to it that may never come to fruition, but I'm really willing to go on the adventure and bring my library along on that. 
That's great. Yes, I think that we're all kind of learning still yeah. about AI and its potential um, benefits and ap applications and for libraries. So what do you think as we're looking um, at in the past, um, what do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? Yeah, when when you sent me the potential questions here, I um I uh, was really trying to think of technology. And then I thought, no, the obvious thing is COVID. My own library was physically closed for a year and a half. And through a lot of that time, we were reactive to the circumstances going on. We didn't know week to week, sometimes month to month when we'd be coming back and we were having to shift and shift and shift. And then when we came back to campus, it just wasn't like it was before. So, for example, use of reference services and course reserves at my library are way, way down. And they're unlikely to return to pre-COVID numbers at all soon. And that's kind of problematic in some ways because we often use those numbers, you know, how many, how many interactions we've had, how many times we've checked up books as ways of justifying funding and positions and more than that with our administration on our campuses. I suspect that a lot of libraries are like mine and they have that new reality now that doesn't entirely resemble their previous one. And we're still trying to figure out how to work through it strategically. And thinking ahead to the next decade, what do you think is going to have the biggest impact on libraries? Aside from whatever technology may come along that I haven't foreseen, I'm going to go back to that demographic cliff that I've talked about and the ripple effects that I think are going to go through community colleges and other areas of higher education. The amount of traditional usage of libraries is simply going to be down if there are fewer students in the building, fewer students using us online. And that's going to make it tougher once again for us to make our cases for support if we're relying on those on those traditional forms of statistics that we've been using. So it's going to force us to consider further ways in which libraries can provide services and resources so as to remain essential parts of our campuses. Thank you, Peter. And, you know, it's been a few months since you've submitted your book chapter. I was wondering if anything, your thinking's changed at all, or you have anything you wanted to, to amplify from the champ chapter? It, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot, even before I, I you invited me to do this webcast. I was thinking, was I too pessimistic in my chapter? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my the way I usually like to think is prepare for the worst. Be very conservative in your approach to things and keep expectations modest. And then you can be happy about the hoped outcome. Um, so I feel a little less pessimistic, perhaps, than I did when, you know, as I said, cautiously optimistic. But what's telling to me is we have a fairly active network, a listserv of librarians in the community colleges across the state of California. And I'm not hearing doom and gloom. You know, I still see positions being posted and some newer job titles that are coming forward related to, to things, uh, you know, OER, which has been around for a while, but I'm glad that libraries are taking more charge of it and moving into other areas. So, so I do have reason to feel optimistic, but I'm still preparing myself for the most conservative, difficult case possible. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's good to, um, you know, keep the bases covered there and uh, be hopeful for the yeah. future. And that's encouraging to hear that um, sounds like there's a lot of good planning going on and, and a little bit more optimism that is um, taking place. So um, as we look ahead to the future in the next 10 years, what advice do you have for information professionals? Um so it, for people who are already in the field, as well as the ones who are coming out of, of the various programs, I think one good thing is to build strong networks and really take advantage of them. I mean, I know I have the advantage of being at a community college with multiple staff in a state with a really robust community college system. And I know that there are, even in, in California, there are some community colleges where it's just one person in that library, but there are a lot of individuals out there who are alone in their libraries. So use whatever you can to cultivate a network, whether that's a professional association such as the American Library Association or your state association. 
Association or alumni associations, you know, through your through where you did your MLIS or elsewhere. Um, and then once you've connected into them, really tap them, send them your questions, find out what they think is going great for them and use the models that they can provide you. It's not a new strategy, I know, but it's always good to be reminded that we're not alone in our profession, even if we feel like we're alone in our libraries or on our campuses. Yeah, that's great advice. And is there anything that information professionals can do to better prepare for their desired future? Um, let go of notions that libraries are spaces only for quiet study and contemplation and shelves of books. I mean, we, we've seen this many times. I do have people reach out to me and say, I'm really interested in a library career. I love books. And that's wonderful. You know, I love that you love books. But let's think beyond that and think what it really means to be in this profession. And then if your career path in libraries is taking you into higher education, I want you to look past the library and really learn about what's going on in terms of colleges or universities where you are. Learn about accreditation, learn about the education code or whatever other laws may be in place and what they have to say about library services and higher education. And most importantly, learn about what the vision is of the college or university you want to work at so you can see how you and the library will fit into it and can advance that. That's really good advice. And what key competencies do you think that librarians will need to have to thrive in the year 2035? Okay, this is where I'm going to go back and be really kind of old school here. And I think about organization of information. Um, it's not the only competency, of course, but it's so fundamental to what we do. And honestly, I think it transfers to many different situations, even outside of the library. So imagine being the person on a campus committee, being that library representative, and being the one person who can really discern the patterns of how things fit together. And that's a valuable thing you can contribute to that, especially if you can explain it to other people, which is part of what we do as information professionals. Or being the service, the being the person who can ask when a new service or something is proposed on a campus about how information is being gathered in relation to that and how it's being used and how it's being stored and then accessed later. These are the things that we as information professionals, as librarians, bring to other parts of our of our colleges that they aren't always thinking about. It's a skill, it's a mindset that demonstrates how well a library and its staff can partner with other parts of campus in ways that those units don't always see right at the outset. Excellent. I have one last question for you. Sure. And that is, I'm asked, I'd love for you to define and sum summarize your vision or your view of the future of libraries in six words or less. <laughs> what a challenge. Um, <laughs> and you know, at my college, they ask us, we're told to describe our teaching in three words and no explanation. So sorry, I'm explaining too much. Six <laughs> words. Say yes, participate and collaborate thrive. I love it. That's great, Peter. Thank you, Peter Hepburn. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you for your contribution to Library 2035, imagining the next generation of libraries. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. And I've, I've loved talking to you about and hearing more about your vision for the future of libraries. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for attending this webcast with Peter Hepburn, author of Chapter 17, Survive or Thrive, Can Community College Libraries Surmount the Challenges They Face? To view additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. And thank you again for attending.